Hey guys, it's Ben from EFI University. Uh, I've been talking a lot lately about these new conical valve springs from 10K Technology. And so today I just wanted to take a minute and talk to you a little bit about uh, what we measure when we're uh, setting up springs for an engine and what makes a conical spring uh, what we call progressive, why that's, why that's um, important for you to know and how you can kind of look at it. So what I've got set up is our normal spring tester here. I use the one from Performance Trends, just a standard Arbor press uh, with a linear gauge on it and a load cell. So it measures the height of the spring and the load at any given point. Uh, I've got a normal uh, cylindrical dual spring here with a retainer and I've got a couple of conicals and, and my setup here. So let's talk about what we're measuring when we put it on the spring tester. The first thing you got to understand is I hear a lot of people out there say, what's your spring pressure? Or you know, uh, how much spring pressure do I need? Pressure is really the wrong word because pressure is measured in PSI or pounds per square inch. Our springs are really measuring or providing uh, low, just pounds of force. It's not really pounds per square inch, just pounds of force. So when we measure the spring load at a given height, for example, what I would do is put in my spring tester here for this dual spring. I'm going to have a seated height or, you know, when the valve is closed, my installed height is going to be 2.1 inches. Then I'm going to compress the spring for an 800 lift cam to 1.3. So 2.1 installed, 1.3, and we're gonna measure that. So I'm gonna stick it over here. Now I've got the retainer on it as well. Um, so I would have to go over here and make sure whatever the step is in your retainer, um, you're gonna to wanna to have that. I didn't bother doing that for this test. I just wanted to show you an example of what we might measure. But what you would do is you would, take your retainer, you'd take some dial calipers and measure the height of that step. Typically around 100 thou is what that step is. And that's just because the inner spring isn't always the same height as the outer spring. So um, you wanna have that step in there to make sure you're compressing that inner spring the same amount. So on a single spring, obviously that won't matter as much, but if you're using a dual or a triple, make sure you know what those steps are. But as an example, I'm just gonna to toss this in here real quick and I'm gonna show it to you. So the loads we're gonna get are gonna be uh, slightly different than if I had measured the step and set all it up correctly. But all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell it to measure and I'm gonna pull the handle and watch the, you can see my height here changing and you can see my force here changing until it basically goes to what we call the solid height. And when I get done, then it'll give me some number. So this little guy's pretty cool. So it says at uh, 2.1 inches, I had 272.4, pounds of force at 1.3 inches fully compressed to 800 thousandths then i had 778.9 so those are the two loads at the extreme end of the spectrum that we have and from that what we get is something called spring rate or rate would be how quickly the force is increasing as you're compressing your spring so the spring rate is calculated by the difference between these two values over the length of uh, travel. So for example, if you said I had 778.9 when I was at 1.3, subtract out the 272.4 that you had when you started and divide that result by the change, 0.8, and you would get this rate. So the rate that this spring would change its force is 633 pounds for every inch. So for example, if I was to compress the spring 0.1 inches or a tenth of an inch, I would get about 63 pounds of extra force. So that, that line is assumed, that slope is assumed to be linear, but that's one of the things we see here is it gives us a non-linearity percentage. In this case, this brings around 3% non-linear, which means if we were to take more than just those two points at the, the top and the bottom, and let's say we just drew a straight line between them, and we measured more precisely. Let's say I stopped every 50 thousandths of an inch or every 10 thou or every 25 thou and took a measurement and then plotted that out. What you would see is if you drew a perfectly straight line, this spring deviates from that perfectly straight, straight line, not very much, only by about 3%. So we're gonna come back to that and I'll show you some of that data here in just a minute. But the other thing that I wanna show you is it gives me a bind compression, which is basically the point when all the coils stack up and it becomes solid and it gives me a clearance between my maximum lift and my bind compression. So we can see here that um, my bind compression would be uh, 855 thousandths. So that would give me 55 thousandths clearance to bind. So if I went start installed this at 2100, compressed 800 lift, I would have another 55 thousandths before this particular spring 
uh, would go solid or would stack up. Now, one thing you want to watch out for is you don't know necessarily if it's the inner spring or the outer spring that's getting to coil bind first. So if you're setting these up on a really racy engine uh, with a lot of RPM and potential, you know, uh, for uh, things you didn't intend to happen, make sure you know which one binds first and which one is closest to bind and set up according to that. So, so that's that. But I want to talk about the conical spring. Um, ours is unique. This 10K technology spring is cool because not only is it a cone shaped, which means we have less active spring mass, the part that's moving. Now, the part that's on the head down here, this bottom part typically isn't moving a whole bunch, so it's what we call dead coils or non-active mass. The part that's moving, the active mass, is what we have to try to control uh, when we're looking for stuff like on our Spintron or whatever. But what you can see about a conical is the top where all of the active mass is, is way smaller and lighter and therefore um, easier to control. But the one thing that a lot of people don't know is that the rate of the spring gets really non-linear and that's awesome because then we can use that as a tuning tool. I can have maybe um, one rate when I'm at my installed height, maybe a little less rate somewhere in the middle, and then maybe as I start to get over the nose of the cam, I wanna really ramp that spring rate up and we can kind of tweak and tune on those with a conical spring like this. So I'm gonna show you what I mean here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and change these values. So I would install this spring, let's say, at 1,900. And then um, I'm going to only do, let's say, 650 lift. So that would be like 1,250 should be my compressed height. Let's see, that's right. Yeah, 1,250. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my spring in here. I'm going to tell it to measure. And we're going to do the same test over again. So I'm going to turn around here. You can see as I'm pulling the handle, the, the spring uh, height is changing and the spring force is changing, and we're measuring, we're measuring, we're measuring, and then it's gonna go solid, so then I'm gonna back off. Okay, so now what I see is that I'm about 149 pounds at inch 900, my seat load's about 150 pounds, and my open load is about 504 pounds, which gives me a nominal rate of about 546.5 or 545, Hence the name of that spring. That's our TK545 spring. That's a 10K technology, 545 pounds per inch rate. And what you see that's interesting here though is that it's it's almost twice, almost double the non-linearity. But the rate that's here is just assumed it's a straight slope. Again, you can see my bind comp is 728 and my clearance to bind is 78. So I made a little spreadsheet and what I did here, I'm gonna bring it up for us, <clears throat> is I went ahead and measured the loads from our dual every 50 thousandths of an inch and then plotted out. What you can see here is I've drawn a red line that's perfectly linear and I've plotted the measured data on top of that and you can see they very closely match. That's why it only had like a couple, two, three percent of nonlinearity, which is what you would typically assume. Now let's take a look at what we got from the conical spring and I'll show you how that differed. So if I go over here, and scroll up, I've done the same test, but what we see here is a really large difference between the red line, which is the theoretical slope of that spring's load, and the blue line, and you can see that it's very much uh, changing or it's variable. We have a little more load on the seat to control that valve bounce that we're always trying to stay away from. We have a little less load in the middle, so what we're trying to do there is avoid some of that deflection and bending of the parts in the system. And then as that lifter starting to get up to the nose of the camshaft profile where we really need to put the brakes on and stop things, look at how uh, the, the rate is really increasing on this conical spring. So that's what we talk about, that's what we mean when we talk about that non-linear or progressive rate of these springs and it's very tunable in terms of shimming it up for our installed height to be 15 or 20 thousandths lower or 15 or 20 thousandths higher because it shifts where we are in that variable load curve. So it's really cool if you're out there and you're thinking about your valve train and you wanna learn more stuff about it, I am absolutely thrilled to share this information with you. But sometimes people go, well, is this really just a gimmick or a trick or whatever? It's not. These are really awesome technology. This conical shape really allows us to tune the system and tweak out any of the bad things we don't want, like some of that valve bounce or surge or loft over the nose. And these are all things that we can use on our Spintron, develop just the right cam profile, spring profile setup. And then when you buy it, you know it's ready to go and perfect. So for more information, 
information on these springs, check out 10ktechnology.com or come to one of my EFI University classes and I'll teach you how to measure this stuff too. Thanks guys.